say I would rather be in Huntington than Los Angeles. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I'd probably rather be anywhere besides Los Angeles. When oh man, if shit goes down here in Los Angeles, like serious, serious stuff, the traffic alone makes this yeah. the most impractical city to live in. Yeah, everybody's dead. Dead. You're dead. Oh, okay. So this one, this question comes from Gray. Do you guys think the world will end with a bang or a whimper? And how do you prepare for a whimper anyway? Mm, good question. I think that when we talk about the apocalypse, we're kind of assuming it will be a bang, right? Because I feel like a whimper implies that, like, slowly over time, it faded out. Mm -hmm. And then at the very end, only then did it realize it was fading out and whimpered as it popped, as it went away. And a bang is like, everything was fine, bam, it's not fine anymore, right? Yeah, I think so. So I, I kind of feel Whimper like... Whimper is like, you know, uh, global warming. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so I kind of feel like it'll be a bang only because I think that's what it would take for us to kind of accept that the world has apocalypse. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, otherwise, I think everybody otherwise, would be in such denial. But then again, that's the whimper, right? Yeah, that's what everybody's doing currently. I would say, how do you, to answer the question, how do you prepare for a whimper, like, we're doing it. We have celebrities yeah. talking about it when they accept a speech, and we have some people preparing and most people ignoring it. You know? Yes, I do. I mean, oh, you know what was suggested as a as a uh, as a episode, time. which we might want to consider doing, is a uh, Trump apocalypse. Like, what if Donald Trump wins the presidency? Oh my god! Uh, well, let's wait until after the elections are over. Yeah, and then we'll talk about it in retrospect because it's just way too real right now to actually talk about in I think some so way. Too. Yeah. But I bet we can do research into, like, presidents who have been elected when people were like, please, no, not them. Yeah. And see how it went afterwards. Yeah? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, we have one last story here. This is from Michelle. Michelle said, you mentioned not opening windows if a tornado comes. My dad told me that when he was little in Kansas, his bedroom was in the basement. He saw a tornado in their back pasture, so he opened the window thinking that he could somehow help him. Unfortunately, it basically just sucked all the oxygen out of the room. It created a vacuum, and someone had to open the door from the first story. In high school, I was filming a friend's writing lesson, and we spotted a tornado across the pasture and hunkered down in the office while it passed. Everything was fine until the horses in the barn started freaking out. The winds knocked down full jump horses and flew them across the pop property. Those wooden standards and poles are heavy. That's from Michelle. I, I loved uh, that she shared that story. I like the, um, that's so interesting that it, that it sucked all the air out. You know, but I've been, I, so like, I've had it before, not to this degree, mind you, but like, I'll have a window open mm -hmm. and like, I'll have a door, you know, slightly open and like the wind comes through the house or like whatever blows out the window and it slams my door closed. You Crazy. know what I mean? Yeah. And now I've never been in a scenario where there was such a vacuum from the wind from outside that I could not open the door, but I think. 